Hello and welcome back to the Genesis training videos, the uh, assessment portion of the SOAP note. Just a really quick recap. You're looking at subjective, objective, ADL, assessment, plan, notes, and narrative. So the assessment is what we're going to look at right now. One of the main functions of the, di uh, of the assessment, uh, at least initially when you're building a note, is to make sure you add all of your diagnosis codes. When you're billing claims, the insurance company is not going to necessarily take all of the diagnosis that you have or that the patient has on the claim form. So you want to make sure that you document that. In addition, when you're doing, when we're talking about billing and coding and diagnosis linking and modifiers, a lot of times you're not going to have an, the option to add enough diagnosis codes to your claim to be able to link all your procedure codes properly. So and that's just a function of the way the insurance companies accept claims uh, intentionally. So what we want to do is just always make sure that you have as all the diagnosis in your documentation to support what, what you're doing. This way, if you ever get denied on a claim, you can appeal it with your documentation saying uh, if you get denied because you don't have a, a diagnosis link or, an, or it gets bundled, you can always point back to your documentation. Uh, of course, in a post-payment audit situation, you also want to be able to be able to point back to your documentation as the supporting information for what you build, uh, not necessarily the claim. The documentation is actually much more important. So um, what I'm going to show you is how the diagnosis codes work. I, again, this is all customizable, so you can go in here and customize what diagnosis codes you have. But there's most of them are already in here, if not all of them. So I'm going to click and and you can see that they're broken down by different areas. So cervical, for example you can see you have cervicalgia. Now I just clicked on this cervicalgia and what you can see is on the upper left hand side that added that diagnosis code to the ICD-9 uh, ICD selections. Now I'm going to show you you can select multiple per box and again that's muscle spasm that's going right up here so that's going to be added in here but watch what happens I can choose a number of boxes or or just I can put one per box or select multiple per per box but let's just say I'm gonna for demonstration purposes show you what happens now I've added four here alright so what happens is now I may want the patient may have more than those problems right so I want to make sure that I continue to add those kyphosis I want to add all of these diagnosis codes Oops. Okay, so I'm adding all these diagnoses. Now you'll notice it's only going to add up to four. So what you want to make sure of is that the first four you select when you're building a note, that's the, the four that are going to be populated up here. I'm going to get more into diagnosis and procedure codes and, and modifiers and linking diagnosis codes and all that in a separate video, but I want to show you as it pertains to the assessment part of the note what's actually going to happen here when you're building a note. All right, so that's the diagnosis codes, and again, put everything you have in there. Then you want to look at this button here, and this is the treatment response. Again, all customizable. You can add buttons here, remove buttons here, etc. So you want to say slight improvement, moderate improvement, market improvement, etc. So let's say for today's, it's slight improvement, and why are they slightly improved? Their compliance with the treatment plan that could actually be used if they've gotten better or if they've gotten worse. A patient could be getting better because they are complying or a patient could be getting worse uh, if they're not complying. However, if they're not complying, it's probably better to put, I mean, if they're not getting better, it's probably better to put the non-compliance with treatment plan. This is more ambiguous. But again, you can add any number of buttons that you want in here as well. Oops, let me just put patient's compliance and complicating factors. Anything you want to add here as to why they might not be progressing, they may be following through with their care uh, in the office, they may be doing their home care even. However, they may have diabetes which is going to slow down their healing process. They may have excess weight, they may have complicating work-related activities, they may have already uh, very bad degeneration in, in their spine, they may have had a surgery recently, uh, had recent injuries, what have you. This is where you want to Again, document why the patient is progressing or is not progressing on a daily visit. So let's say um, this is what I'm seeing more and more, excess weight. 
All right. So when you look at the narrative section, it's going to show you all the diagnosis codes. So if you put one per box, that's where it'll break it out, one, one bullet point and one diagnosis code, one bullet point, one diagnosis code. So that's a little bit, I prefer it that way. It just depends on how many diagnosis codes you have. If you have too many to fit one per box and, and you need to double up on a few boxes, then, then do so. I, I think it looks cleaner if you have one per box. Um, and then you can see it observes slight improvement in condition due to patient's compliance with treatment plan. Patient's response to care may be limited or delayed due to excess weight. So that's really important, you can see. And I'm going to go into, again, I'm going to go into customizations in a, in a different video. Just so you remember, this is the free form field. Anything you put in here goes to the end of that section in the narrative. And you can see it right here. Also on the assessment, a lot of times I get the question, what are these two things on the left. I'm going to show you what it is. I'm going to show you how it goes into the note and then I'm going to explain why I actually, this is an older feature. I'm going to explain why I actually don't recommend you use it. If I choose, let's say this 30% here and this 60% just for demonstration purposes, you can see this is improvement since last visit. This is 30%. And then improvement since first visit is 60%. The reason I'm not fond of this anymore is because um, it's a totally arbitrary number picked by the doctor to put in here. Post-payment audit, it's very difficult to defend where you came up with these numbers because realistically you're, uh, you're not measuring their percent improvement uh, of their objective findings and subjective findings. This is a very general, general, this is a big generalization as to the patient's improvement. So I would suggest you do not rely on this and actually use the objective and subjective findings to speak for themselves. You don't need to defend that or even try to guesstimate what the percentage improvement is. But that's what they're for. Some doctors still use it because they have a reason or a way to defend it. 